Welcome to the Green Park Council webinar, Parking Plus, Parking Reimagined. This presentation is part of our continuing series of informational webinars on sustainable technologies and programs in parking facilities. I am Trevor Mead, Green Parking Council Associate Director. If you encounter any technical problems during the presentation, please email me at trevor at greenparkingcouncil.org or send a chat message in the box on the left-hand side of your screen. Please enter any questions into the chat box as well. We have 15 minutes at the end of the webinar to go through the questions we received during the presentation. The webinar will run no longer than one hour. I will now pass the presentation over to GPC board member and advisory board chair Mark Gander of AECOM for an introduction to Parking Plus. Mark? Uh, thank you, uh, Trevor, and hello. Um uh, afternoon audience. We have um, a very compelling and innovative uh, presentation for you today uh, about a program that is really um, hits to the heart of what the Green Parking Council uh, is about and what we all aspire to uh, professionally who uh, work in the field and provide uh, services um, to our clients and also um, patrons who come to our parking garages. You can see a, um, a kind of a, a very exotic uh, image before you. Uh, and this is representative of the work uh, that you'll hear about today. And you'll notice that within each of the slides uh, as they get into their presentation that um, um, they have sort of uh, linked together some of the programs that they worked on uh, with the Green Parking Council certification standards. So I'm happy to introduce to you um, what the Long Island Index worked on uh, in terms of and supported by the Rausch Foundation to rethink the design of parking facilities in four Long Island communities. The Long Island communities were uh, Patchogue, Rockville Center, Ronkonkoma, and Westbury. Uh, most of those are served by the Long Island Railroad uh, commuter train station, and you'll see examples of how uh, they were able to address the sea of parking that surrounds many of the um, parking areas. So that this um, presentation sort of nests within the Long Island Index uh, project that's supported by the Rouse Foundation. Um, within their Build a Better Burb program. And you'll hear more about that. Um, and you'll also probably hear more about the Rouse uh, Foundation. So it's an exciting presentation. Um, just a few words now about the Green Parking Council. As you can see here on the next slide is that the Green Parking Council has quite a membership group. We were started about three and a half years ago by a number of large parking operators and commercial real estate companies who saw an opportunity for sustainability to enhance their business uh, profile and to uh, really leave something for future generations um, to uh, be proud of. As you can see, the Green Parking Council has blossomed to incorporate a wide variety of organizations, including technology firms, automobile, original equipment manufacturers, such as Nissan and BMW, um, planners, designers, architects, and other like-minded nonprofits. Today, the Green Parking Council represents over 10,000 locations, including almost 5 million parking spaces throughout North America. We are an affiliate of the International uh, Parking Institute, and we are their green arm. And as you can see on the next slide, summarizes a little bit of the Green Parking Council. Um, we operate at the intersection of parking, green building, clean technology, renewable energy, smart grid infrastructure, urban planning, and sustainable mobility. The purpose of the Green Parking Council is to transform parking assets from mere car storage into mobility and access activities with integration centers for every mode of transportation. A keystone, or the capstone part of the Green Parking Council, as we can see here on the next slide, is our certification process uh, where we certify uh, parking garages um, across the globe, actually. That program was launched just last month at the Inst International Parking Institute uh, main conference in Texas. 
here you see the four main elements of the um, of the of the green garage certification. We have the um, three uh, or four pillars of it: management, programs, and technology. Um, applicants within each of these areas um, prepare a USGBC lead-like application and submit uh, how they uh, meet the criteria that are outlined in the guidelines. Um, they are professionally reviewed and then and scored and submitted to the Green Parking Council. And based on that, there are, is a tally of points that are um, awarded. And based on that tally, um, the uh, certification award levels are, are, um, are given. Either uh, you get a, a gold, which is the highest level, silver, um, or, or bronze. And I encourage you to um, look deeper into the Green Parking Council website. Um, there's uh, some fabulous literature about the certification process. Uh, I um, suggest you contact Trevor right away to get the certification handbook and guidelines. Uh, read them, review them, incorporate them into your parking um, garage, whether you're a municipality, an operator, or an owner of the garage facility. It's a uh, tremendous benefit to the parking industry and also to uh, your community and, the, uh, and your patrons. So without further ado, um, I'd like to um, present to you uh, Jocelyn Wink, who's the um, AICP, uh, or excuse me, uh, I guess we're at, um, uh, who's with the Long Island Index. Uh, Jocelyn is the Associate Director of the Long Island Index, the project that gathers and publishes data about the Long Island region. The Index is a project of the Rouse Foundation, which is a Long Island-based family organization. Ms. Wank is also editor of Build a Better Burb, the online journal of suburban design. Prior to working for the Rouse Foundation, Ms. Wank worked as an urban planner in the Long Island offices of AKRF, an environmental and planning consulting firm. She is also serves on the Long Island office acting head. She began her career as a community planning consultant in suburban Detroit. Ms. Wang is a trustee of the Society for the Preservation of Long Island Iniquities, the Long Island region's nonprofit historical preservation organization. She's a member of the class of 2011 of um, the NRJ Partnership of Malloy College's Regional Stewardship. She graduated magna cum laude from Princeton and is a master's in urban planning from the University of um, Michigan. Um, and with that, I'll let her um, go forward and give her presentation. We were followed by um, then by Danielle um, Hunt, which is the, who is the communication coordinator at the Rouse Foundation. Um, she is the, uh, prior to joining Roush, uh, Danielle uh, spent six years managing communications and outreach at the Ability Beyond Disability, a nonprofit organization headquartered in Bethel, Connecticut. Danielle graduated with a BA in political science from Rouse College in 2007 and then with a master's in public administration in 2011. So with that, let's get to the heart of this um, webinar. Uh, thank you very much. Um, thanks, Mark. Um, we're delighted to be here. This is Danielle Hunt. Um, I'm the Communications Coordinator for the Roush Foundation. Our presentation today will focus on the Long Island Index's Parking Plus Design Challenge. We'll be sharing innovative designs for new parking garages, focusing on the sustainability attributes of the designs. Um, but before that, just a little bit of background. The Roush Foundation is a family foundation based in Garden City on Long Island, just east of New York City. The foundation was established in 1961 so that the Roush family could give back to the place where they have roots. The Long Island Index is a project of the Roush Foundation. The index gathers and publishes data about the Long Island region with the goal of engaging Long Islanders in thinking about the region's future. The index published our first report 10 years ago. Since 2008, the index has been looking more closely at the region's downtown and train station areas and researching how we can better capitalize on this regional asset. In 2011, the index launched the Build a Better Burb website, 
which is an online design journal chock full of articles and images with innovative ideas for main streets and train station areas on Long Island, as well as suburbs throughout the nation. For suburban communities that are thinking about how to reinvigorate their downtowns, surface parking lots, areas that may seem paved over, actually have tremendous potential. In the Long Island region alone, there are more than 4,000 acres of surface parking lots in and around the downtown. What if we use this land for more than just parking? We could rejuvenate our downtowns and address many of our regional challenges, creating new jobs, new housing opportunities, and more walkable communities. But to reuse those acres of surface parking, we need to build new parking garages. For suburbanites, parking garages have a bad reputation. For many Long Islanders, even the mention of structured parking threatens their idyllic village with becoming urban. And from a design perspective, parking garages also tend to have a bad reputation. They've been called the grim afterthought of American design and even architecture's ugly duckling. But we know they don't have to be. This past January, the Long Island Index released the renderings from our Parking Plus Design Challenge. We paired four leading architects with four Long Island communities and we asked the architects to do two things. One, to design structured parking that would defy conventional notions of what a parking garage looks like. And two, to integrate pluses, new uses that would benefit local downtowns and boost local economies and transform the underutilized land in our downtowns. We also asked for plus uses that would have the potential to offset the high cost of building structured parking. So this is a map of the Long Island region showing the four Parking Plus communities. We have the village of Rockville Center, the village of Westbury, the hamlet of Ronkonkoma in the town of Islip, and the village of Patchogue. We asked the architects to develop designs that were specific to the particular context of the four communities, yet prototypical, <coughs> so that the ideas could be applied in variations to communities across Long Island and also throughout the nation. Now I'm going to turn it over to Jocelyn to walk you through the specific designs. As Danielle said, I'll be showing you the designs in detail, focusing on the Green Garage certification elements that they incorporate. I'd like to begin by talking about two standards that all four designs meet. The aerial photo that you see on your screen shows just a portion of the massive surface parking lot that currently exists on one of the four sites in Ronkonkoma. All four Parking Plus designs would replace surface parking, which is one of the innovative solutions recognized in Section D of the certification standards. All of the garages would be built on previously disturbed sites rather than greenfield sites and would free up land for redevelopment. Secondly, three of the four sites are located immediately adjacent to Long Island Railroad stations, and the fourth design for Patchog is located within easy walking distance of the train station. If you look again at this aerial photograph, you can see in the top portion of the photo that the surface lot in Ronkonkoma is bounded by train tracks. All four of the proposed garages would enable commuters to park their cars and board mass transit, benefiting the environment. The first design we'll look at closely, Civic Arches, was prepared for the village of Rockville Center by Util Architecture and Planning, a design firm based in Boston. The garage would achieve the objectives of the placemaking certification standard. The arcades that you see on the ground floor of the garage were inspired by the robust concrete columns that currently hold up the elevated train tracks in Rockville Center, which you can see at left in the image. This creative architectural design would create an appealing community gateway and help to retain the historical quality of the train station area in Rockville Center. In addition, on the middle floors of the garage, Precast planters would double as car bumpers and guardrails. The garage would have aesthetically pleasing vegetated walls that would also meet the placemaking criteria. The Civic Arches garage would also meet placemaking standards by creating new public space for community activities. The ground floor of the garage would function as parking during the week when commuters need the space and as a public plaza on weekends, hosting farmers markets, antiques markets, movie nights, concerts, and other community events. The Civic Arches Garage would include bike parking and bike share program infrastructure, which you can see at lower right, satisfying Section B Measure 11 of the certification standards. 
For suburban locations, providing this infrastructure matters a lot because we have the last mile problem. In other words, how do you get commuters from the train station to their homes without needing their cars? Currently, just 1% of commuters reach the Rockville Center station by bike. This number could potentially be increased through development of a bike share program and by accommodating bikes at the train station. The rendering also shows that the garage would include electric car charging stations meeting the standards of Section C Measure 5. By integrating EV charging stations with on-site renewable energy generation through rooftop solar panels, the cars could even be charged with clean energy. As I mentioned previously, the Civic Arches Garage would function as public space when not in use as parking. The illustration shows that feature of the structure and also shows how the garage would include courtyards, bringing natural light deep into the structure. The design around courtyards would reduce the amount of electric lighting needed, corresponding to Section C, Measure 9 of the certification standards. The Civic Arches Garage would have rooftop solar panels, as I mentioned before, so the structure would generate energy in conformance with Section C, Measure 16. Finally, the Civic Arches Garage prototype anticipates a future in which the use of cars and demand for parking might decrease. Innovative solutions listed in Section D of the Green Garage Certification Standards include designing a garage with reuse in mind to extend the potential life of the structure. In this case, flat floor plates, removable ramps, internally located elevator cores, and a straightforward structural system would allow for adaptive reuse of the structures for office space and or housing in the future. The next design we'll be looking at this afternoon is Main Street Brackets, created by Dub Studios, an architecture firm based in New York City and Los Angeles for the village of Patchogue. Patchog has a busy main street, an active theater, and a budding art scene that attract a steady flow of visitors who seek parking in one of the village's 12 municipal lots. The lots are located behind main street and are difficult for visitors to find and navigate, resulting in uneven occupancy. Some lots are always full, but many never reach capacity. Visitors drive down main street and can't find a space, not realizing that there are lots right behind the buildings. Or if they find the lots behind Main Street, they may not realize that there are additional secondary parking lots beyond. Main Street brackets would make better use of the parking Patchogue already has by creating a shared parking system. A new network of pathways shown in the brick red color on the rendering would be developed to connect rear parking lots to Main Street through alleyways between buildings. The paths would also connect to lots farther away from Main Street, secondary lots. The intention is to create a better experience for pedestrians and more legible connections between parking lots and the downtown. The goal is to encourage visitors to park in spaces not directly adjacent to their destination. The proposal for Patchog also includes a new mid-block parking deck designed to be airy, open, and easy to access. Main Street brackets would include wayfinding signage displaying parking counts for each lot and for the garage. Counts would be relayed to automated signs directing motorists to available spaces. This would reduce the amount of time that drivers spend finding a parking space. Parking occupancy information could also be transmitted to smartphones via an app. Implementing the Main Street Bracket system would mean drivers would do a whole lot less circling in their cars. More than 30% of traffic congestion in downtowns is caused by drivers searching for spaces. Less circling would reduce, reduce crashes, turning movements, congestion, vehicular pedestrian conflicts, miles driven, time spent looking for parking, and vehicular emissions. Beyond saving gasoline, this would all add up to a cleaner, safer, greener, and easier to use downtown for Patchog. And this is a clever graphic created by Dub Studios to show just how much driving the system would save. The Main Street Brackets proposal also includes a placemaking component. The parking deck could be used to sponsor large public events that don't fit on Main Street. Additionally, the Green Garage Certification Standards recognize placemaking efforts that engage and support the arts. In this case, 
the architect envisions that local property owners would help define the character for each of the village's parking lots and for pedestrian pathways and landscaping. In the parking lot adjacent to art space, a recently constructed building in downtown Patchogue that includes gallery, studio space, and residential space for artists, the new pedestrian pathway could have art displays extending gallery space outside. Moving on to the third Parking Plus proposal, Train Terraces is the Parking Plus proposal for the Village of Westbury, created by LTL Architects of New York City. Train terraces would include a new intermodal transportation hub providing a sheltered bus stop to enhance connections to the railroad. Ample bike parking and a bike shop with rentals and service are also part of the package. The northern portion of train terraces shown at bottom left in the rendering you're looking at on your screens would include a parking structure wrapped by ground level commercial space with apartments above. The apartments would be terraced and would have green roofs to manage stormwater, reduce heat island effect, provide natural habitat, and absorb carbon dioxide. These environmental benefits achieve the Green Garage Certification Standard for roofing systems. The southern portion of the plan includes a new urban rooftop green at the same level as the train tracks, which could be transformed into a farmer's market and special event space to extend the parking facility's hours of use and to reimagine the train station as a more integral part of the community's future, achieving placemaking standards. The design also includes electric car charging stations and a rooftop solar array would provide power for the station. The train terraces design would combine permeable paving with rainwater collection to provide an annual harvest of more than 300,000 cubic feet of water, mitigating stormwater runoff. A solar array and canopy would shade the structure. These attributes achieve several measures listed in Section C of the Green Garage Certification Standard. The last Parking Plus proposal, created by Roger Sherman Architecture and Urban Design of LA for the Ronkonkoma train station area, is called Parks and Rides. You actually already saw an image of this at the beginning. Mark showed that to, to you. It's an ambitious proposal for one of the busiest rail stations in the region in the shadow of a major regional airport, Long Island MacArthur Airport, on a parking lot the size of the Empire State Building on its side. This diagram shows the current number of cars in the Ronkonkoma train station parking lot each day of the week. As you can see, the site has low levels of utilization in the evening. Those are the dips between each weekday. And also on weekends, those are the low points at the right-hand side of the diagram on Saturday and Sunday. This next diagram shows how parking util space utilization would change with construction of parks and rides, which includes both structured parking and a robust mix of uses. With its mix of programs, parks and rides would extend the stay of commuters at the station site while also offering nighttime and weekend attractions for leisure visitors and residents from the surrounding area. The proposal meets the Green Garage certification standard for shared parking by encouraging use of spaces throughout each day and week. Parks and Rides would also address the current issue of commuters driving not just between home and the train station, but stopping at several places along the way, trip chaining. Currently, in suburban Long Island, car trips between the train station and home often involve multiple stops, with parking required at each store, restaurant, doctor's office, gym, and dry cleaner along the way. That's represented by the two meandering lines in the top half of the, of the slide on your screen. Parks and Rides would consolidate all of those visits at the train station itself. You can see the impact by looking at the short straight lines in the bottom half of the slide. Here's what architect Roger Sherman wrote about this. Instead of arriving at 6.21 p.m. to a sea of emptying spaces, what if you could pick up dinner on your way to the car at a Whole Foods or farmer's market, hit the bike track, meet a friend for a drink, catch a movie on the lawn, and pick up the kids from soccer, soccer practice? while cutting your real commute home in half. The Parks and Rides design would also create new intermodal connections. In this image, you can see the proposed parking stru structure just south of the railroad tracks and train station. Farther to the south is MacArthur Airport. When the airport was built, it literally turned its back on the station 
by placing its passenger terminal on the far side of the airfield rather than adjacent to the train. The absence of a seamless link between the two is a major wasted opportunity. Currently, a car or taxi is needed to travel between the train station and the airport, even though they are so close to each other. The Parks and Rides proposal would remedy this current deficiency, getting rid of the need for a car to go between the train and the airport by including a future air terminal annex. To close, I'd like to highlight one of the best outcomes of the Parking Plus Design Challenge, which has been press coverage spurring readers on Long Island and across the country to rethink surface parking and consider the potential of parking garages. In the article, Why It Makes Sense for Long Island to Rethink the Parking Garage, um, journalist Anthony Flint, Flint wrote in City Lab, formerly known as the Atlantic Cities, the Roush Foundation, a nonprofit trying to foster innovation in Long Island, looked at the 4,000 acres of surface parking in dozens of villages anchored by Long Island Railroad train stations and hoped to spark a slow and steady, steady transformation to transit-oriented development. The article quotes suburban retrofitting co-author and Parking Plus coordinator June Williamson, who says, the Long Island designs challenge fundamental stereotypes about everyday infrastructure. In Putting Cars in Their Place, an article in the Boston Globe, columnist Paul McMorrow wrote, suburban modernization means taming parking. These towns can't realistically go car free, but they don't have to. They just have to reinvent the way they approach parking. They have to invest in parking garages, not just as concrete boxes that hold cars, but as tools for unlocking development and tightening the urban fabric. And finally, uh, in Parking and Recreation, in an article in Architectural Record, uh, writer Fred Bernstein wrote, imagine if Long Island commuters arriving at new station-centric developments by train could work out, eat dinner, shop, and pick up their laundry before getting in their cars. By including structured parking, the new facilities could also free up thousands of acres now used as surface lots. The architectural record article concludes by quoting LCL Architects partner Mark Suramaki. We wanted to rethink parking, typically seen in purely negative terms, as a condenser for new programmatic and urban possibilities that might offer an alternative to continued suburban expansion. Rethinking parking and embracing parking garages is key to opening up new possibilities and combating suburban sprawl. Thanks. Thanks, Jocelyn. Those are all great examples of what the possibilities are for parking garages. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that you can send any questions in the chat box on the left-hand side of your screen, and we'll start going through some of those questions now. The first one is, what was the local response to these proposals and the opportunity they present for the communities? Um, sure, Mark. This is Danielle. I'll, um, I'll answer that. Both Jocelyn and I have spent a lot of time actually um, going to different groups and organizations on Long Island and um, presenting the ideas of the, of the Parking Plus Challenge. And it's been really interesting. When the challenge uh, first began, we reached out to a lot of communities on Long Island. We wanted to get a good cross-section um, for the challenge. And there were quite a few communities, um, if you know anything about Long Island, you know, it's, it's very small villages, it's, it's very home rule, and they, they felt like a parking garage was not representative of their village, of their town, it wasn't the character, n not in my backyard, they didn't want it. Um, after we presented the designs and have spent some time over the past few months trying to get the word out, the conversation has changed significantly. Um, people are much more open to it. They've seen that a parking garage can be beautiful. They've recognized what it can do um, for their downtown, um, how it can free up space, how it can help uh, spur the economy. And now we actually have municipalities reaching out to us saying, you know, can you come here and talk to my village about parking and show the examples and, you know, maybe this is something we'd want in our town. So, just since January, the conversation has really shifted, and that's been really exciting to see. That's, that's wonderful. Is there any um, interest in actually moving forward with the project in any of the communities or, or talk about that? And, and if not, what are some of the institutional constraints uh, for deploying these, these designs? Sure. Um, there, there's been great interest. Um, one of the really cool things about this project was that the municipalities really worked alongside of the architects 
So there was a lot of input. So, um, you know, for example, with Rockville Center, um, in the Civic Arches proposal where you had um, a lot of gathering space, that was something that the village really identified as a need, and there was a gap there that they wanted a place where people could come and gather and have markets and events. So um, that ended up in their final proposal, which has made the municipality a lot more receptive to the designs. Um, I don't think any of them will probably be constructed exactly as they are. Um, you know, these were sort of pie-in-the-sky ideas, but there's been real interest from the municipalities and also from the Long Island Railroad. Long Island's, um, again, a bit, a bit odd. Some of the parking lots are owned by the railroad, and some of them might be owned by villages or towns. So the, you know, who can build a parking garage can get a little bit tricky sometimes. But in Rockville Center, there have been conversations between um, the village and the railroad about moving forward with some financing options. In the village of Patchogue, which was uh, the Main Street Brackets proposal, um, they are uh, drawing up uh, designs right now, and they've actually applied for funding um, through a few different avenues. The village of Westbury, train terraces, um, the village probably isn't really ready to take that step right now, but we're sort of working with them and having conversations of how to get to that point. Their village is sort of an up and coming. And then uh, Parks and Rides yeah, is uh, very grandiose. Um, so that's probably not happening anytime soon, but there is a lot of development happening around the train station. And we've been trying to have conversations with some of the people involved in that project because since a parking garage likely will get built, you know, our hope is that uh, it will be built in the right way in a way that can really benefit around there. So there's movement, it's slow, but, um, uh, you know, I think we'll see things happen. And what's interesting is, as Danielle said, we're starting to see some other communities that are picking up on some of the ideas uh, from the designs that are starting to, you know, places where we never thought we would hear, we want a parking garage, we need a parking garage, a parking garage can be beautiful, are actually starting to say that in certain communities. And, and for other communities uh, throughout the country, would you just, should, should we direct them to the uh, Long Island Index website if they want more information on how the designs and pieces of the designs that they can pull to, to bring to their own garages? Yeah, actually, um, I think maybe I'm going to flip ahead here because I think if I go to the end, oh no, I was looking, um, if you go to buildabetterburb.org, um, that's our Build a Better Bird website. That has really in-depth proposals. The Long Island Index website sort of has more of the overview. Um, the Build a Better Bird website is definitely more focused for planners, um, you know, for, for people who are really, really interested. There's, you know, each uh, architecture firm gave like a 30-page in-depth proposal, and then we also have videos of each of the architects um, unveiling their proposal at our annual launch event. That, that's pretty cool. So yeah, I would definitely uh, direct people to the Build a Better Burb website uh, to get more information. And Build a Better Burb has a Parking Plus tab up at the very top of the site that you can use. There's also, if you go to the Browse Articles page on Build a Better Burb, there's a Parking Plus Design Challenge tag that you can click on and all of the articles related to Parking Plus will come up. Okay, that, that's very helpful. We had a question come in about looking into community sharing programs for segways, bikes, smart cars. Is that something that was looked into when, when looking at these projects? Or did the architects independently um, come up with some of those ideas I think you mentioned? So was the question about whether the architects had looked, had looked into those things? Yeah, or if it was part of the, the process behind this, looking into alternative modes of um, a, a driver for, for creating this initiative. I think the one proposal where um, the Parks and Rides proposal, one of the team members is a woman named um, Kati Rubinyi, who was editor of the car in 2035, Mobility Planning for the Near Future. So one of the things they were looking at in their proposal um, was, I guess, how vehicles are going to change in the future. Um, and their garage design, I think, is intended to address that. Um, it gets the changing nature of vehicles going forward. We had another question come in about the actual financing. You, you mentioned some projects that are talking about financing uh, the construction of new garages. Would this be done through public-private partnerships or 
by the municipalities. You said the railroad actually owns some of the facilities or the lots currently? You know, I think that's a really good question, and that's a question we've been hearing often. Is, so since structured parking is so much more expensive than surface parking, how can communities pay for it? Um, we worked with, um, one of the people who worked with us on the Parking Plus Design Challenge was um, Jerry Giosa, who's a parking consultant and president of Level G Associates, a parking consulting firm based um, on Long Island. And we talked, he's worked with several communities in the suburbs of New Jersey. Um, just one example is Morristown, that have been able to build structured parking in their downtown. And so he shared with us some of his wisdom about how they were able to do it there, and some of that is, is transferable to Long Island and to other suburbs. So the challenge, I think, for the suburbs is you're not necessarily going to be able to have a parking garage pay for itself through user fees because you just can't charge people enough in, in a suburban setting. Um, but that's where there's this key idea of freeing up the land for other uses. So um, through the redevelopment, you are the accompanying redevelopment, you would be able to pay for structured parking. Um, and that's, that's what we saw in a lot of the New Jersey models. This was a really unique project that the Long Island Index took on. What was the, the main driver behind it, and what initiated this vision for the challenge? In, you know, in 2010, we released a report called Places to Grow, and having looked at what the big challenges were that our region was facing, we started to say, what are the solutions for the Long Island region? And in the Places to Grow report, we actually quantified the amount of available land, the amount of land that's available for redevelopment in our downtowns and train station areas. Because Long Island has this phenomenal network of uh, well over 100 downtowns and train station areas that are places where people want to be, that are places where we have public transit. Um, and they have tremendous potential for growth. That report, the 2010 report, found that there were more than 8,300 acres of land available in our downtowns and train station areas for redevelopment. And then the next big thing we figured out when we looked more closely at that available land was that more than half of it was uh, surface parking. So we started to say, if we want to free up that land for redevelopment, we need to be more open to parking garages than we have been in the past. Um, so we were actually very inspired when we looked at the, the famous um, Herzog and Jamoran garage in Miami, in Miami Beach, um, which is, you know, incredibly beautiful. And we started to say, garages can be beautiful. I think, you know, we can start to move the needle on this and change Long Islanders' perception of structured parking. Thank you. Yes, that garage in Miami is, is quite a facility as well. So. That's all the time we have for questions today. Um, if anybody has additional questions, they can follow up with Danielle and Jocelyn after the, the presentation. I'd just like to thank a moment and take a moment and thank both Jocelyn and Danielle for taking the time to educate us on their design challenge. The information they've shared helps us understand the opportunity that forward-thinking parking structure designs can bring to communities throughout the country. Thank you very much, Trevor, and thanks, everybody. Thank you. We're so happy to be able to share the designs with you. Thank you. And this presentation, as well as the, the slide deck and the panelist contact information, will be available on the Green Parking Council website as of tomorrow. Um, so you can share it with, with folks who are unable to attend and, and use it as a resource moving forward. Thanks for joining us.